to, to take their goals and dreams and to take their obstacles and break those obstacles. And that is why Sienega is a PBIS school, because we sincerely believe that there is that goodness in every single student. Nobody's a throwaway. Nobody. And we will work whatever it takes to break the boards, whether it's physical or internal, because everybody will reach their goal. And do we know that it may take a little longer to be successful with some kids? Absolutely. It's not Pollyanna. But we will give and give and give until kids become successful, find their gift, and then our culture's changed. It's like a really good part of PBS thing is like getting out early out of class. For me, I think it's more of like the encouragement to like do good because it actually gives you something than just good grades. It makes you want to work harder because you get all these different cool and then you, activities you get to do. You feel all like privileged with it. Feel better about yourself. She works with kids who are really struggling in school. That the red, the few red kids, uh, kids who are really struggling at home, or sadly enough, many kids nowadays think there is no end, and they talk about committing suicide. Or if they're what do you enjoy most about? the raffles and some of the incentives that they have. Then it, it encouraged you to do something good. Like, you can like, I don't know, like, win. Yeah, win. So they encourage you to do something good so you can do something yeah. Do you think students look at it as like a childish thing, or you guys take it kind of seriously? Oh, we seriously? take it serious. Okay. It's just not, no, it's a reward for doing something good, so it encourages you to do it again and again. And again. And again. And again. <laughs> If someone asks you what is PBIS, how would you explain it to three to five words? It's all about connections, high standards, success, connecting with students. Okay. For a school just starting PBIS, what would um, your first advice to be the initial first step? Essential. Building school culture, such as your game day t-shirts or our, our all-in t-shirts. Um, would you say that PBIS has made an impact on your role as a school administrator? Absolutely. Um, what has the, the most significant impact been? The change in our culture and the change that our students are kind to one another and have the high standards. Um, how do you involve students with PBIS? Listening to what their concerns are, the pluses and the negatives. Holding focus groups so that they have a face-to-face -face time with the principal. What recommendations would you have for a school that is just starting out with you, yes. As an administrator, the administrator and a couple teachers need to hold focus groups with kids. It's important to make sure that they are hearing what students think about their school. Um, do you include reinforcement technologies for your teachers and staff? Absolutely. We have drawings with our fat cat cards for students as well as for staff. So staff can earn different incentives as well for making sure they're connecting with kids and having those high standards. All right. And overall, how um, how much do you like this school? Like, do you oh, like this school, this school is, is incredible. I built it from the ground up. I've been here for 11 years and I plan on staying here because it's a great place to be with students and staff. All right, well, thanks for taking your time, Thanks, and how are you say? Thank you. Hi, Andrew. My name is Lenny, and I'm going to ask you four questions today. One more. <laughs> All right, first question. If someone asked you what PBIS is, how would you explain it in three to five words? Three to five words? Um, um, great success, for one. Um, promotes positivity. Makes people more kind. Could you imagine? Could you imagine your school without PBIS? Uh, kind of, not really. It would be more chaotic for sure. <laughs> Less plain, you know, wouldn't have all the posters around and whatnot. Yeah. Um, as a student, what would you say is the most appealing thing about PBIS? Uh, just that more people get along with it. There's like, I feel like there's less complications between the students and whatnot because we're all living up to those high standards and whatnot.
Overall, how would you describe this one? Better than the rest. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm going to take a lot of pride in my school. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't imagine going to any other school. And last question. Have you ever been involved or would like to be involved in a PDA student project? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I mean, it's all fun to travel a little bit, so. Alright, well, thanks for being here. In their, in their pocket. And if they see a new student all of a sudden clear up all the trash from the table in front of the trash can, they may walk up and go, that was impressive to see that nobody had to ask you to do that. You have high standards to keep our campus clean. Thank you. Here's a fact. Okay? But what was interesting is sometimes we forget to give out that pet cards, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be for every single action because the whole thing is we want kids to learn that this is part of life, to be kind and be polite. But it is nice to get a drawing. I mean, I like getting gifts. I like it when somebody brings me a brownie or a cookie and says, look, I thought about you today. Here's a chocolate covered strawberry. You know, you, you like all those positive pieces. So what this would look like to these three students, and I had already planned to give out cards to the student photographer after our yearbook editor said, we need a, an admin picture. So it would look like this. I, I know that you have other things to do with photography, but you were here today, and I know you're going to be a part of prison here, and I'm putting you on the spot. You make high connections, or high standards, and thank you for making it feel significant. Enjoy your fat cat card. You deserve it. In photography, they like to send out kids by two so that they can then go edit and do all these wonderful pictures with, with your book. I appreciate that. Again, you're in Nichols' beginning classes, right? Yeah. yeah. So how cool that you're going to have a picture in the yearbook from beginning class. So thank you for having those presentations. They're yours. And, and then as a yearbook editor, I know you're a TA. You could be doing some other things for Mr. Haddon. But thanks for coming forward and, and coordinating all this and having a story for other people to come forward. And I know that I want to give you this. You've been very polite waiting for me as I have this time. Okay, so it's just something along that line. And so they each got a fat cat card. They probably didn't come in here waiting to do this thinking they were going to get a fat cat card. Did you think I was going to give you him? Okay. But, but what they shared with me just a few minutes ago before I got started was about upperclassmen and underclassmen with fat cat cards and top cat. And I'm like, Oh wow, that's interesting feedback. So I, ha I have to implement a change because of what they shared with me just a few minutes ago. <coughs> what did you share with me a few minutes ago? That these are more for, we see that they're more for the underclassmen to make them feel more comfortable in being kind, not being afraid to be. And upperclassmen, we already know what it is. We don't expect these as much anymore. So the perception could be that maybe the fat cat cards are just like for freshmen and sophomores. They're not supposed to be. They're not supposed to be at all. But perhaps, as I'm thinking, that maybe my upper division teachers aren't handing them out as frequently, thinking, okay, these kids are really good kids. Why do they deserve one? But they upperclassmen like getting them just as much. I have a landscaping class. When my, when my uh, kids who are upperclassmen were out there landscaping, I totally gave them a fat cat card because they were beautifying our campus, they were making it look great, they were putting in DG and rolling it and tamping it and pulling out weeds and grass. They totally deserved a, a fat cat card. So they all got one and they were all juniors and seniors. And they like them. Anything else you'd like to add on the fat cat card? Why you? Why do you think that it only goes to underclassmen? Well, first off, it's like a really good incentive uh, to do well and to be kind to others and whatnot. Um, I don't know really why it's really getting out to more of the underclassmen. Maybe it's to, like them to be kind and whatnot, and uh, like getting comfortable with doing those kind of good things on campus. Yeah. That's my thoughts on it. 
I think it reinforces the good behaviors that freshmen and sophomores have because they're still building all of those behaviors. But as you're a junior and a senior, you have pretty much everything built up because you're almost an adult. So you're already practicing those little kind acts every day. And to get used to what he was saying, like getting them used to being kind. It's not like, hey, if you watch me pick up this trash, I'm going to get it. Am I going to get back on card? I guess I'm used to, you're not always going to get one. Like, know that. And just being kind around the school is just, like, just what we've worked on that, too. Is everyone can be kind without wanting or deserving something. You know, I always tell kids, I have kids say, I don't need a backpack card, that's okay. And I said, but everybody likes a chance to win a prize. So maybe it'll be a free lunch that I'm buying you a free lunch today so then you can spend your three bucks, you know, at cook right after school. And then, you know, they hum, they're like, okay, and they, and they take the card. Whether it's winning t-shirts, uh, gas cards, any of those things. And I and I will let kids know, well, we have some pretty cool prizes, so I'm giving you one, take it humbly, because maybe you'll win a gas card. Everybody, uh, juniors and seniors, like a $10 gas card. And so, or it's a $5 gift card to Starbucks. So we, we want to make sure that we're trying to give those out more. Now, our, I do believe that they're right on, that it's the freshmen and sophomore teachers who give them out a little bit more. And that's something that I want to share with my staff because we, we want to continue to do this. We have, as of our data, as of um, October, we had given out 20, thousand cards in uh, two years, two and a half years. And we just ordered our second batch of 20,000. So it will, it will last another about two years. And I have now started, I have parents on my core team, and I gave parents a stack of cards. And one of the, the thoughts was, well, will the parents just give them out to their kids and their friends? No. But I have had a mom very involved in sports. She goes to all the games. And I said, Mrs. Budeman, I want you to put these in your purse so that if all of a sudden at the wrestling match, you just see some exceptional behavior, go up to a, a student and then introduce yourself as a parent and say, I noticed that you took the, the visiting team to the locker room, and I really appreciated that as a mom. So here's, here's a fat cat card. I only have three parents giving out the fat cat cards and they are loving it. They've met students now. They're noticing behavior and it's not saying, oh, the Sienega kids are absolutely terrible. It, they're not noticing that. They're really focusing on, on the positive. If someone asks you what PBIS is, how would you explain it to three to five words? Um, it would be a behavioral um, incentive program. Um, what is your school's three to five PBI as expectations? Um, I believe it's connections, high standards, and success. Um, how long did it take to finalize your first behavioral matrix? You know, behavioral matrix? Mm, not familiar with that one. How many, um, oh, is there something you revisit each year? How do you produce your PBIS tickets? Um, PBI's tickets, our tickets would be our fat cat cards. It's a um, behavioral, um, you know, incentive program. So if you do a good deed um, and you are noticed, you are rewarded with a card. It's kind of like a uh, scratch lottery ticket. And um, it's, you have a, either a lunchtime, a Navy prize, a copper prize. Um, and there are a few different other ones, free lunch. But um, the Navy and copper prizes, Navy is the, uh, our, Navy and copper are school colors. And Navy prizes are, um, you know, kind of cheap prizes, but there's something, you know, kind of incentive you. Yeah. You know, sometimes a water bottle. Um, they give us, like, uh, free Carl's Jr. burgers and stuff like that. But um, copper prizes are a little more high up. There are movie tickets. Um, they have iTunes cards and things like that in there. And then um, our big, big prize is um, it's a fat cat drawing, and you can win iPod. They've done iPods in the past, but sometimes it's a cell phone, digital camera, maybe a video game. So. That's cool. Um, could you imagine your school without PBIS? Um, you know, it'd be it'll be a little different actually. You know, it's it's one of those things that's there, and it's you know, I guess you can't. It's not something you think about every day. You know, it's, you don't you don't get a card every day. It's one of those things that just kind of happens. Maybe when you're not expecting it, you hold the door for someone. You know, sometimes that's one of the things. Um, 
I guess you could say it'd be a little different. Um, you know, it's, it's not something that infects, uh, affects us every day, mm -hmm. but it, it's one of those things that kind of makes a difference, you know, overall. All right, last question. Overall, how would you describe your school? Um, Sienega has probably been one of the best schools I've went to. Uh, Vail's one of the best districts in the state, I believe. And I couldn't imagine, you know, being in school in TUSD, you know, it's just completely different, different atmosphere. The Sienega standards are so high, and it puts us at a level that's, you know, different from a different school district. You know, you're higher up, and um, in the long run, I feel more prepared to go to college. So. If someone asks you what PBIS is, how would you explain it in three to five words? Um, I would say that PBIS is three to five words. A positive behavioral system for schools. As a new teacher, how was PBIS introduced to you? Um, well, as a new teacher, I did my student teaching here uh, last year at Sienega, and so when I was introduced to it, it was just part of what um, I had been uh, introduced to uh, as part of the culture. So um, my cooperating teacher had already been familiar with it, so she kind of showed me the ways in which to do it. Um, all the other teachers um, kind of showed me how, um, so I learned that way. And then when I became a teacher, an official teacher in Sienega, um, there were um, certain meetings in which we learned different types of um, systems and strategies that we have at school. And so I was more formally introduced to it that way. Um, what is your school's D to five PDAs to teachers? Um, well, our expectations, um, we have them uh, out on the uh, posters on campus. Um, we have connections, high standards, and success. Could you imagine your school without people here? Um, honestly, I really can't. Um, I think that PBIS is something that I feel very strongly about and I believe in. Um, I think that it has such a positive effect on our school and the student body. Um, I think that everybody embraces it and um, since I did my student teaching here um, and I haven't been at any other schools, I really don't know any other way so I can't really imagine mm -hmm. what it would be like without PBIS. Alright, did you have any initial hesitancy about PBIS? Um, no, uh, because I've always seen it um, executed very successfully. Um, I've never seen any issues with it, um, so I just embraced it. Last question. What would you say is the most beneficial element of PBIS? Um, I think that the most beneficial element of PBIS would be um, seeing the rewards um, afterward. Um, I think that when you reward with positive uh, behavior, or you reward positive behavior um, with things such as what we have, our, our fat cat cards, mm -hmm. things like that, um, it's an incentive for students to do well in school. Um, when you emphasize what the positive behavior is that they're doing, then there's more feedback. Um, I think students respond better to that. And I think that when you point you know out what? what they're doing well, as opposed to what they're doing badly, um, I think that they have a better response to that, and the whole school has a better vibe. Right. Well, thank you so much for taking time to meet me. We hope you Thank you so much. How has PBIS made an impact on the entire school in the gym? Um, for, this, for the lunch periods, it's reduced um, a lot of the disciplinary problems that we've had. We, part, we chart as far as where the discipline problems happen in the first period, second period, whatever, lunchtime. But in the past, before we started this, lunch, lunchtime was a big, big uh, incident, big time in which a lot of uh, behavioral problems happened. So we came up with this idea, me and Mr. Niblo, and um, saying, that, well, actually, Ms. Ms. Peña came up with the idea, and Mr. Niblo and I myself help volunteer to do it as uh, far as you know, reduces the chances of incidents that happen or discipline issues. It decreased dramatically. Hi, um, okay, first question. What is your initial recreation to the announcement that the school would be open for adopting the PBIS funding? Uh, my initial reaction was uh, I was excited to see the funding. Uh, it's, it's nice working on a campus and being a member of the school community when focused on the things that are going well rather than constantly punishing people for the things going well. And it makes for happier students and happier staff. So I was, I was happy.
Would you say any of those hesitants still exist? Um, there was no hesitation, so I was, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did your school work to address concerns teachers had regarding the Well, we have um, a team of teachers, students, parents, and uh, office staff that work together. We call it our cast care team. And our team gets together uh, every month or so to talk about what's going on with our PBIS programs. When we first started out, we looked at the, the data we collected about where we're having problems, and we look at ways we can improve um, what's going on and how we address our problems. And so instead of always telling kids, you know, oh, don't do that, don't do that, you're being bad, we prefer to talk to our students and, and say, this is our expectations, and then recognize their expectations. Could you imagine a school without PBIS? Uh, I've been to schools without PBIS. It's, it's get, it can be really scary. Yeah. Um, it's more safer. It's more safe, and people like coming to school. I mean, it's not uncommon to have kids that are involved in you know, four or five different activities, like athletics and clubs and, and these things, because our students like being on campus. Last question. What has been the most profound impact PBIS has made in your school? The, um, the culture of our school is very friendly. Mm -hmm. And um, when we have visitors on campus, they, they recognize that and they've commented on it. And um, so I think that when outsiders come in, they can, they can just see that we're a friendly, kind uh, campus. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the big problems we had, or that we, that we addressed, we didn't have a huge problem with it, is as we, as we implement our programs to have a positive score, we need to make sure everyone's on board. Okay, we, we can say, hey, we're going to do all this great stuff. It's going to be great for kids. And our teachers are going to be like, and it's more work for me. And so they're not really happy about it. So programs that we've put in place have involved the teachers without a lot of extra work on their part. So two programs I want to tell you about. One, we have a program called the Top Cat. Um, and all of our teachers give their students a citizenship grade for every class, whether it's their advisor base or an academic class. If they get a grade, they also get a citizenship grade. If these students um, get good citizenship grades, they become top cats. And a citizenship grade just says, are you responsible? Okay, if, are, you, are you trustworthy? Are you behaving the way um, you typically should be behaving in different areas? You know, are you not perfect, we're not looking to create angels here, but um, we look for students that are, that are responsible for their actions. Um, if they become top cats, then they get freedom at school. Like in my advisor base right now, I have top cats that are in there and they check in, they listen to the announcements, and they're free to leave. They can go out on campus and, you know, kick a ball around, they can play hacky sack, they can read under a tree, they can do homework, they can go check out the career center, they can, um, they can do whatever. We made a... Uh, courtyard area. Uh, we had tables made and, and we have speakers where all they got to do is walk in and plug in their iPod and they can listen to their music and they can use their cell phones and they can do whatever they want um, in that area. Mm -hmm. And those are things that we, we go to students and say, thank you for being responsible. When you're in my classroom, you respect the classroom rules and you get you know most of your homework done on time. When you're in the parking lot, you're courteous to other drivers. When you're at lunch, you're courteous to other students and, and faculty that are, that are there. And so you're a responsible person, so thank you, and we're going to give you more freedom because of that. The second program, and all the teachers have to do then, because I want to emphasize that, the teachers just give them the grade, so that's a click, and they're done once a quarter. Um, and then the teachers have the ability to take that privilege away from the student if they all of a sudden decide to become a jerk. Yeah. Okay, so if I have a student in my classroom that just decides one day that he's going to turn into a leaf and, and be an idiot, then I can be like, hey, you're a top cat, and you're not being very responsible, and if I can't trust you to be responsible, then you're going to lose that privilege. And so our teachers feel like, like they have a say in what's going on with that program. The second program is a fat cat card, so it looks like a little lottery ticket, I don't know if you've seen those yet. Um, but that's another thing where teachers and uh, we have parents that are on campus a lot carry those. All the bus drivers, the office staff, every the custodians, everybody has access to these cards. And someone opens the door for you. Someone picks up your books. Someone, you know, whatever. You see someone helping someone else. You can give them a, a fat cat card and say, you know, thanks for for being positive and thanks for you know upholding the expectations we have. And uh, and so the teachers then are also given a chance to reward students, even if they don't even know their name. And so, so, 
so the whole school is, has worked to make a program that is is good for the students because they're being rewarded for their good behavior and it's um, helpful for the teachers because my classroom discipline goes down if I've got all students that want to be top cats and get fat cat cards so I don't have a bunch of people distract, disruptive to my classes so so it all works together it's really I enjoy it with me I wouldn't imagine being in a school that didn't have a mm -hmm. Everybody's so positive at the school well, yeah. have a good day thank you thank thanks you for time to come see you. Oh, no could you imagine the school without people Honestly, I could because the school isn't too much different without it because I feel like here people want to do good and so with PBIS, it just raises the numbers of who wants to do good because it gives people something to look forward to. Are there weekly, monthly, or quarterly contests for the faculty? Not contests, I wouldn't say, but more, more or less like people doing good things in class so they get rewarded by their teachers for doing something extraordinary. Who gives out tickets? Uh, any staff member. Okay. Um, what is your school's certified PBIS expectations? Um, just to go above and beyond uh, what the average student would, would, would normally do. Last question. Overall, how would you describe your school? I would describe my school as um, uh, one of the best in, in the state because we are rated the number one school district in, in the state and the athletic programs are, are excellent along with uh, academics and the involvement of the community and the staff and the students to go with you. Thank you. If someone asks you what PBIS is, how would you explain it in three to five words? Um, something to look up forward to, something to look to base what, we, how should we act? I guess I would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Could you imagine your school without PBIS? No. Honestly, it's. I wouldn't say it's that different, but it's actually something that makes us stand out more than anybody else. Yes. Um, what is your school's due to five PBIS expectations? Um, it's the connections so that we can connect with each other, we can connect with the school, the teachers, high standards, like the principal was saying, we all want that. Like, no one just wants to, I'm not going to graduate, and that's the uh, C to G committed to graduate, and then she said all that leads to success, and we all want that after we graduate. Um, overall, how would you describe your school? Um, I love my school. I had. My mom gave me the choice to pick what school I wanted to go to, and I wanted this one just because the standards are higher than any other school. So I love it. Okay, last question. Have you ever been involved or would like to be involved in a PBA student project? Um, I have kind of been involved because I, I was in Yes Club last year, so we kind of deal with a lot of the stuff, trying to get the school a better place and um, get everybody involved with more school activities. So I, I enjoyed it, but now that I'm a senior, I'm busy with graduation. So. Uh, quite involved in the PBIS program. Um, for, as far as intervention, uh, giving students uh, uh, quality uh, things to do if they are uh, having problems. Uh, we have uh, plenty of programs uh, to take care of that. All the teachers are involved and a lot of the students understand uh, what the programs are, uh, especially uh, security and all the staff. One of the initiatives we wanted to do to validate is, is we ran all the students lists in, through power school freshman sophomore junior senior and and then we had staff go by and and this has been an activity that mark sharon brock and you know they go and you put a star and you take the name so we took the name stickers off the charts and we put them on a, another sheet and the only way you could do that is if you knew that student you had to had to know the student by name you had to know something about their family and or their family or their involvement in school and you had to have talked with them in the last um, three weeks and then we would see what kids were left. Now I know a lot of students and I know what sports they're in and, and I know their families but I may not have talked to them in the last three weeks so that was really hard for me because I'm like what is this? What can I do with this family? I know they're a student worker here. I know they do this but 
it's very difficult for one person to, to talk to all those kids within three weeks. But we were right at 98% of our students. If someone asked you what uh, if PBIS is, what would you explain in three to five words? Positive reinforcement. Okay. Sure. For a school just starting PBIS, what would you advise to be the essential first step? Well, the first step, I would say, is getting a core team to figure out how positive reinforcement and reinforcing all the, the good actions and how you're going to promote that. Uh, there's lots of ideas out there. I think the most important first step is getting a core team of people that believe in this system and then developing strategies to implement that system school-wide. Okay. If someone uh, asks you what PBIS is, how would you explain it in three to five words? Um, three to five words, uh, it's just a, it's a very positive focused behavior intervention for students. It's something that we focus on the positives. Did you have any uh, initial hesitancies about PBIS? Um, sure. I mean, I've been at another school where we were just starting PBIS. Um, this one is already implemented when I got here. Um, but as it moves on, it gets better and better. We start to add more elements. The school has a ton of elements connected with PBIS compared to the, when we were just starting out. Okay. Um, as a new team, um, we got that one. What is your school's three to five PBIS expectations? Wow. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to remember <laughs> with all the stuff we go through here. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is just student behavior, focusing on the positive things that students do um, and trying to motivate positive behavior. We do things with uh, special lanyards that they give out for students that are what we call top cats. Um, and they're able to go to lunch early, a few minutes early. They're able to leave school a few minutes early, depending on the day of week, things like that. Okay. Last question. As a new teacher, how was PBIS introduced to you? Uh, well, as a new teacher here, it, like I said, it was already in place. They just kind of told us that it was, that's what we do, and these are the things that kids get benefits from. We had, I've had a ton of email support, a ton of flyers given to us explaining what each element represents and means. Um, when we were first starting it at a former school I was at, it was the same kind of thing. We tried to keep the communication high and tried to keep things going. What recommendations would you have for a teacher in a school that is just starting out with PBIS? The biggest difficulty with PBIS, honestly, is getting buy-in. Um, if you go into it full-hearted, it works, um, but it takes time to build into. Don't expect to throw 50 things on top of PBIS and then expect it to work. you got to start with one or two and then work into it. If someone asks what is PBIS, how would you explain it in three to five words? Um, It's like control of the school. Um, how does PBIS define what it means to be a student at the school? It's helpful and I mean it helps a lot when I'm sorry. It's just it's helpful like knowing that like the organization is helping out and like there's organize like something's organized. Um could you imagine your school without PBS? No, not really. No. Dr. Pena's helped us a lot with it. If someone asks you what is PBIS, how would you explain it in three to five words? Uh, it's community building. Um, how does PBIS define what it means to be a student at the school? It kind of reinforces what we already do. It just shows other people how our school really is, but our students are already, like the little things that we do with PBIS just helps reinforce how good our student body already is. Have we ever been involved or would like to be involved in a PBIS student project? Sure, but I haven't ever been involved. Like, do they your fun? Um, what is your school's what is your school's unified PBS expectations? Uh, our schools are connections, high standards, and success. Um, um, how do you produce your PBIS ticket? I think the principal gives us one. And how many do you think they give out a month? I would say 
Probably about 50. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of rewards do students receive? You can get t-shirts or there's free McDonald's cards sometimes and there's little bobcat necklaces and there's a lot of stuff. Are there weekly, monthly, quarterly contests for this? There are contests every six weeks. If you get one of them drawing stickers on your card, then you put it in a box and they draw it and they have prizes like iPod homes or digital cameras. Um, as a student, what would you say is the most appealing thing about PBI? I would say it makes you feel good about doing good stuff for other people. Last question. Overall, how would you describe your school? I really like my school. It's, it's a really positive environment, and I don't think that I want to go anywhere else. Well, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. If someone asks you what PBIS is, how would you explain it in three to five words? Um, I would say that PBIS is three to five words. A positive behavioral system for schools. As a new teacher, how was PBIS introduced to you? Um, well, as a new teacher, I did my student teaching here uh, last year at Sienega, and so when I was introduced to it, it was just part of what um, I had been uh, introduced to uh, as part of the culture. So um, my cooperating teacher had already been familiar with it, so she kind of showed me the ways in which to do it. Um, all the other teachers um, kind of showed me how, um, so I learned that way. And then when I became a teacher, an official teacher in Sienega, um, there were um, certain meetings in which we learned different types of um, systems and strategies that we have at school. And so I was more formally introduced to it that way. Um, what is your school's D to five PDAs to teach us? Um, well, our expectations, um, we have them uh, out on the uh, posters on campus. Um, we have connections, high standards, and success. Could you imagine your school without people? Um, honestly, I really can't. Um, I think that PBIS is something that I feel very strongly about and I believe in. Um, I think that it has such a positive effect on our school and the student body. Um, I think that everybody embraces it and um, since I did my student teaching here um, and I haven't been at any other schools, I really don't know any other way so I can't really imagine mm -hmm. what it would be like without PBIS. Alright, did you have any initial hesitancy about PBIS? Um, no, uh, because I've always seen it um, executed very successfully. Um, I've never seen any issues with it, um, so I just embraced it. Last question. What would you say is the most beneficial element of PBIS? Um, I think that the most beneficial element of PBIS would be um, seeing the rewards um, afterward. Um, I think that when you reward with positive uh, behavior, or you reward positive behavior um, with things such as what we have, our, our fat cat cards, mm -hmm. things like that, um, it's an incentive for students to do well in school. Um, when you emphasize what the positive behavior is that they're doing, then there's more feedback. Um, I think students respond better to that. And I think that when you point you out what? what they're doing well, as opposed to what they're doing badly, um, I think that they have a better response to that and the whole school has a better vibe. To, to take their goals and dreams and to take their obstacles and break those obstacles. And that is why Sienega is a PBIS school, because we sincerely believe that there is that goodness in every single student. Nobody's a throwaway. Nobody. And we will work whatever it takes to break the boards, whether it's physical or internal, because everybody will reach their goal. And do we know that it may take a little longer to be successful with some kids? Absolutely. It's not Pollyanna. 
but we will give and give and give until kids become successful, find their gift, and then our culture's changed.